naturally, we all have our favorite board games. And what's interesting, I want to say the past five years, five to eight years, and, and I really think, honestly, Kickstarter is what has been driving this. Whether that's for good or not so good, that's, that's kind of outside the scope of this vlog. But Kickstarter has driven the explosion in board games um, in terms of content, in terms of time of delivery, in terms of being able to provide more, more I was going to say miniatures, yes, but components, because miniatures are components and expansions, um, essentially, essentially front load all the purchases, all the risk, get an interest-free loan, and then bring it to market. So not only the, the, the development cycle has been shortened, but I, I do believe certain Kickstarters have been pushed out that through traditional channels or a non-Kickstarter source, if it was never invented as, as a vehicle, as a, a medium on there, we possibly wouldn't see them. As a result, like um, board gaming has grown massively on there. It's, it's mainstream. It's kind of like wargaming. Okay, yeah, we, we've grown. There's more people playing Warhammer 40,000. Um, there's more people playing X-Wing miniatures. It's a collectibles miniature game, but I, I would call it a war game. Um, historicals, you know, World War II, DBA, DBN, it's, it's the same group of people playing it. It's still kind of very small and focused. But over the years, I, I think just as the Internet has made people able to connect as opposed to um, magazines and journals and play-by-post and things like that, mailing little literally actual mailing lists the hobby's grown the hobby's grown but not like board gaming that's out there i mean even role-playing games D D is mainstream now D D is mainstream now i i mentioned in another podcast i knew D D was mainstream i wasn't anywhere near the gaming store i was just out doing whatever i'm walking down literally main street in white plains and i see a dude wearing a D D t-shirt that's that's I'm like here we go. It's just where we are. Um, YouTube also has a big part in that, both propelling. I, I think the best thing for role playing games was YouTube, because now you can see actual adventures playing. You can see people interacting. You can see a gaming session and not only get ideas, but but plug yourself into the gaming session and play along. Asking yourself, what would you do? How would you resolve it? Um, and and push that aspect into the game so it's exploded that but board games have made the massive 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 jump of growth which which is great because you know i enjoy playing them and especially if they have miniatures so this brings the question of um there are certain games in every era that are just legendary and and i'm not talking about um something that because you were growing up and you played it, it has a special spot in your mind. Um, I played Dungeon a lot. So when I, or Talisman, and, and when I look at it, when I look at Talisman, and you guys know I love Talisman on there. I mean, I got my own playlist on it. It, it, it is limited. It's an 80s game. It's a roll and move. It's random. Um, there are tactics involved, but, but looking back, you're like, okay, look, it doesn't hold up against modern board games. I would say, yes, you know what? You're, you're actually correct about that. But it has a special place in my heart. Putting those aside, there are older titles that are absolutely solid. You know, the rule sets are solid on there. Is there value in re-releasing older board games, older titles? Um, the greatest example would be something like Hero Quest. Um, I know there was going to be a modern update to it. It got held up by, you know... IP and, and owners because I was it Hasbro owns part of it and GW owns part of it so it's never going to fly on there because anything involved with miniatures GW is just going to clamp down on um, but an updated board game is there value in the community now because there are some older titles there are some older mechanics that are very good but at the time it would be little square counters it would be hex maps. It would be the components would be very um, 80s, very basic. That's out there. Imagine if we took some of those amazing titles, throw some Kickstarter resources behind it, and now have some modern printed miniatures, some modern printed materials on there, some artwork, some box work. I just wonder 
why, well, who owns these titles on there, but why have they not been reprinted? Or, um, I mean, Restoration Games is doing a great job on there, doing a great job, but why we're not seeing more of that if there's this rush to cash? And uh, certainly, I don't know what the exact numbers would be, but, but paying to develop a game, to write the rules, to do all this, if you could acquire an older title, I won't say reskin it, but just re-release it, especially if there's an audience out there. I mean, I don't know, just run a queue on, on Board Game Geek and see, um, see what comes up in the older games from the 70s and 80s top playlists, top lists. I wonder if now, at some point, we're going to start to see that explosion in board gaming pushing things forward. 